Hello and welcome to the show. I am here today back on Car Mechanic Simulator. It's been quite a while since I've had a look at this game. However, engine swapping has now arrived. Oh, to an extent, engine swapping has arrived. You see, I had a little bit of time searching around. Unfortunately, it's not quite as mad as you might like it to be. Take a car such as this Corvette-ish, uh, and it will come up with the options that you can put into the vehicles. However, there's not really any mad options, and quite a few vehicles don't seem to have any. I was hoping to be able to put a big supercharged V8 into a little car. The ones that I found uh, didn't have any, uh, which is perhaps a little bit of a show. You know, we're not going to get the W12 out of a Bentley and put it in this pickup truck, for example. Uh, so as, as far as kind of extreme options, you can't swap the rotaries into anything, or the rotaries out of anything. To be fair, I suspect the licensed cars, that might get a little bit funny, uh, having to deal with their engines. But I was hoping to be able to stick these, uh, you know, the big engines into uh, other cars, and unfortunately not. Uh, even the pickup truck, while well, this one here does come with the V8 from Standard, uh, this can't have the Oh, the i6 version of it, sorry, kind of a V8 then implanted into it. It's really only the V8 cars that can swap around between them at the moment. I don't know whether the more is going to come, uh, which is a, a little bit of a shame, I'll be honest. However, we are going to give this truck a supercharger and an awful, awful lot of power because, I mean, this is about... Uh, it's, it's an okay, it's an okay engine to, to start with, uh, but we're going to give it a lot more power than it should ever have, and then see what happens. That's why I've got it on the stand over here. Now, this truck was a junkyard uh, vehicle. I have gone and done all the running gear stuff, all those bits and pieces before. Uh, the engine that we are working on over here, uh, because we can now build engines up completely from scratch on the engine stand, which is nice. You don't have to have had a kind of base uh, engine to work on. You can literally just start entirely, entirely fresh uh, so that we can do this kind of thing. I'm going to hazard a guess. I forgot a cam gear. Of course I did. <laughs> I tried to, I do try my best to buy most of the bits and pieces before I will start filming so that uh, it's just a kind of straightforward stick on. Otherwise you end up spending most of my time faffing around going through the parts menu. Uh, hopefully I'll have most of them. Oh, I haven't got the clips. Of course, I do. there's always something. <laughs> it's always the clips as well. I did just buy a whole load of rubber bushings because I know what I'm like with forgetting those. I didn't run out of those while building it. Nope, it's just the just the clips. I don't think uh, there isn't a performance water pump. No, I remember looking. Uh, it's got as much performance bits as I can get on here. Uh, this engine is a pretty good one. Actually, one of the reasons why I picked this engine over some of the other options. You can put in, uh, as you saw on here, car status, there we go. Uh, you can put in a Hemi. You can put in the Windsor engine. I don't think you can put in... I was tempted to put in the Windsor race engine, which would be the Ford GT40 engine. However, because that only says Windsor, I suspect it's only these specific names, ones, that will go into the car. As much fun as it would be to put the GT40 race engine into it, uh, <laughs> sadly, not something that we can do. Uh, Actually, it's got to think about it. It's sort of like, like I say, licensing wise. If the Ford engines can go into other cars, I, I don't know. I personally would like to see perhaps a little bit more extreme in terms of uh, in terms of engine availability. Uh, with the engine that we have got in this supercharge, is one of the more power. I think this is more powerful potentially than the Windsor Race even. By the time it is, by the time it's done, certainly we've got a good amount of tunable parts on this one. You know, we've got upgradable uh, cylinder heads, like nine, ten percent performance each, which is, you know, we're going to be hopefully putting out over a thousand horsepower, or no, maybe not a thousand horsepower. Actually, we're certainly going to put out over a thousand torque. Uh, <laughs> maybe not quite the power. It's still not going to be too far away. Ah, oh, the good old. I've forgotten about the good old mismatched. Pistons and rod caps because we've got the performance pistons, of course, and normal shiny. Yeah. Oh, I haven't got crankshaft bearings, have I? Whoops. Uh, but <laughs> it's been a, been a little while. Been a little while since I have I have played this game. Uh, crankshaft. I 
just in case, some somewhere in the back of my mind, if I had decided to instinctively buy some of these, thought it was worth a check. Apparently not. I did buy the oil pan. I have got I have got that one. Oh, we've got <laughs> forgot the fun and games we have with uh, putting the. This has got all the push rods, hasn't it, to stick together. Uh, not that. It's, this is a, a slightly fiddly engine. It's nowhere near the most complicated of engines. Like, there's a lot of little bits to click on, but it's not too bad. Nope, we're going to build it upside down. Well, it's on a full rotation. It is a proper fail race engine. Uh, the, you, know, you have to roll the engine at least once, preferably multiple times, before you will, or before you can even, not before you will, before you can even contemplate installing the engine into the car. Uh, so it's had one of its rolls. I haven't bought the exhaust manifolds because I can't um, remember which ones this needs. Sadly, I don't think we can get an upgraded supercharger. I haven't got a supercharger manifold. Uh, oh, it's just a normal exhaust manifold. Well, that's good. Might mean there's a performance one. We have got the all-important performance spark plugs, that extra 0.1% uh, <laughs> increase. I mean, it's almost an entire percent when you've got all of them added into the vehicle, which is something, at least. And <laughs> then the valve push rods go in... We will need the wires. I think the wires... I didn't buy the wires because I wasn't quite sure what ones were going to be needed. Oh, these have got to have a bolt in, don't they? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We will get... <laughs> we, were, we were on maximum maximum efficiency, trying to do maximum efficiency here, if I can get it timed perfectly. Uh, running gear, of course, uh, on the... Uh, what's it called that we've got is still all all standard, which means tyres might have an issue dealing with the thousand or so horsepower I'm going to give it. Uh, I mean, we might have a drifty, drifty sideways truck. I'm kind of half expecting. Driving physics is not the game's strongest suit. Some cars work quite well. Things like the uh, Pagani, the Zonda, Zonda R, pretty solid in terms of driving. Things like a thousand horsepower pickup. Uh, I mean, let's face it, if I built it on other games, it probably wouldn't be very drivable either. So, <laughs> there is that. I am hoping that we might have just about enough grip to get around the circuit, again, like the little test track we've got. All right, exhaust manifold. We might be able to sneak... I didn't look at the wires, did I? Uh, we might be able to sneak a straightforward... It's a straightforward manifold. It's not anything fancy... Uh, exhaust manifold. Okay, there are actually some of the fancier exhaust manifolds have got upgrades. God damn it, they're more efficient than this one. Well, that's annoying. <laughs> this is a mostly shiny engine. This is most of it can be upgraded rather than like three bits of shiny. Uh, what are you? Ignition wires. Oh, it just, just takes V8 ignition wires. So we might have them in here. Ignition wires V8. Cool. Okay, that's some more performance upgrades for this. Uh, now, we've still got clips. I haven't forgotten. We've still got to get clips. We've still got to get... I have bought the supercharger already. Uh, we've got to get clips. We've got to get the uh, head covers for either side. I didn't. I should have looked what clips we needed because I can't remember. It's fine. Right, we need head cover... Ooh, I was not expecting so many. <laughs> There's there is a lot of a lot of potential. Where's V8? Won't be those. Won't be those. Probably be these. They look like normal ones. V8 head cover A V8 overhead valve. That will be for that. Uh, supercharger intake manifold. Yes, please. And clip. Uh, Buy two of each. I'll, either they'll come in useful later down the line, or I can just sell them on. <laughs> That's fine. I can buy parts. I can sell parts for as much as I buy them if they're you know like brand new parts. So I might as well, might as well just you know kind of do that one. And here's the big supercharger time. I kind of wish we could get upgraded superchargers. You can get upgraded turbo, which is like twelve percent performance increase can't upgrade the supercharger. Although, can I just see this is 12% on each of these? Okay, I mean, maybe uh, the, the upgraded carburetor is more important anyway. <laughs> That's a lot of percentage. Considering this, yeah, this this is going to have a good 800 or so horsepower. If not more. If that, you know, you always want a 1,000 horsepower. 
though I'm pretty sure it's only the modern V8 that will get it. This will get a lot of torque, which is good and terrifying. There's no way any of this is going to be undrivable at all, is there? Oh, I haven't got a fan, have I? God damn it. We did get an air scoop, though. Fan. I have got the right... I think I actually probably put the radiator in the car. Fan, 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 fan. Ooh. That's an interesting fan. <laughs> so, I say it's straight. It's, okay, sure. I don't know what engine that's from. I don't think I've seen Is It might be the Mustang. I think I've built the other fours. I don't think I've ever built the Mach 1, though. Oh, clutch. Let's get the clutch onto the back and there. I mean, it is, it is an impressive looking engine, this, really. It is a very, very impressive looking engine. And it's going to go in a pickup truck that was designed for slightly less. Oh, apparently I don't have a... don't even have a dodgy one. Huh. Okay, well... I guess we'll just have to buy another one. I don't know where the one that came out of it was, but... Car did come with a gearbox, even if it was a crappy gearbox. Ooh, that actually brings up a good point. We are going to need customizable gearbox V8 overhead valve. I'm gonna yeah, presume it'll be that one rather than that. As we're going to want to this is where I've done all of this, and I'm gonna go to put the engine in the car and it's gonna give us an error. I think I've done this correct. <laughs> car lift it A. Perfect. That engine should be complete, so we will go take engine from crate, install engine, hey, V8 two carb overhead valve supercharged, go, is I would have been helpful if I'd opened the bonnet, not going to lie, opening the bonnet, generally a good first step into <laughs> working on your car, but, you know, that's all in. What else? We haven't got a radiator installed yet. That can go in there. I didn't buy those because I wasn't sure what bits we needed. We'll have to lift it up to get the gearbox on. Extend some gear ratios out. This should be good for a pretty silly amount of speed. Probably not very controlled silly amount of speed, but it should be good for a silly amount of speed. Fancy gearbox, which we like to see. I think I have a starter motor somewhere. Uh, not the right one, though. I just built, bought a starter motor because... I'm the Muppet. Uh, I forgot the V8, the, the old overhead valve engines use the same as the modern V8s. There's a fair bit of part sharing uh, going on. I, I mean, like messing around with this. I don't know. I presume this will be a thing that we can see on mod cars. That might be a savior for a save a savior when you want to do the mad stuff. That might be a way to to get that working. Is to have the mod cars able. To give us the interesting engine swaps that we don't see elsewhere. Uh, it's, I guess, trying to fit... Like The, the V8 is a, is a V8. And while these have... Slightly, this one here is... This is the engine the car started with, just a supercharger and vastly upgraded. The Hemis and whatnot. Still, the engine block is very similar. So I guess you don't have to shunt too much like the exhausts and this stuff around. But if you're going from an I6 up to a V8, you'd have to be, it's be a lot more fiddly with things like gearbox, for example. Uh, it's fun enough. You know, it's a fun thing to have. Fun option to have. But... Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would have perhaps liked a little bit more variety, a little bit more option. It's certainly cool if you take like a, a fairly basic car such as this one and then make it mad, madly fast. Uh, so, factory engine power reckons about 500 horsepower and near enough a thousand torque. This will be, of course, a lot more than factory. Oh, we don't have a license plate. Is that the only thing we're missing? Oh, and probably... Inter I put the interior in, didn't Oh, I haven't cleaned the interior. Ah, uh, important stuff. Uh, you go to... Not that one. I mean, that one. Nah. <laughs> that one's already got the best engine pretty much it can have anyway. So, <laughs> once they have one of the supercharged V8s, you can't really get much more power out of them. This has a couple like a Jeep engine and some other options. I don't know. I don't know my engines particularly. But most of those are downgrades to that. So... <laughs> There we go. Oh, we need to buy some license plates, don't we? I think that's our last thing. I say we need to buy some license plates. If I was trying to get it to 100% to sell it, uh, body conditions missing something? Oh, is that just a license plate, maybe? Uh, 
who knows? Number of gears. Let's go for a five speed, shall we? Uh, for a six speed? Uh, 2,000 kilometers an hour. I mean, that's ambitious, I'm not going to lie. 2,000 kilometers an hour is, is quite ambitious. Let's go for, what's that, about 200 miles an hour? Uh, let's do that. I like that we can just slot in another gear. It's like working on a remote control car. Uh, I say slot in another, like, remote control cars will be a single gear, so you'll swap the the spur gear or pinion, but it, never mind, that doesn't work unless you know about it. Either way, you're just slotting, oh, battery, and clips. I didn't put the clips on the thing, oh no, <laughs> I bought them and forgot about them. That's that's well done me, we'll need a battery, otherwise we won't get that one working. Uh, there's a clip in there somewhere, it's really difficult to get to when the supercharger's on, there we go, clip B, found it. Battery's on charge, perfect. I don't know if the engine swaps actually do much to the value of the car, considering the amount of money spent on that engine. Oh, uh, mm, well, I've added a little bit of money. Uh, probably not the largest amount, although there will be a big bonus for getting the car to 100%. That should now be, oh, once we've got the oil into the vehicle, should be us ready to drive. I'm expecting a mess, and quite an uncontrollable mess at that, um, but I could be wrong. Things might change in the handling physics, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. We need to put it on the dyno. What am I thinking? We need to put you on the dyno before we go anywhere to find out how ludicrous the power has gotten in our pickup truck. I, like, I went for the Viper colours. I went for the classic Viper colours. Blue with the white stripes. I think it looks pretty good on that. Proceed with the dyno test. So it started off just shy of 500 horsepower. I mean, if we could get 100% power increase and get it up to that 1,000 mark, I'd be a very, very happy mechanic. Uh, oh, there it goes. Please be up. Please let that be 1,000. And then plummets. Ah, oh, 942 horsepower. 1,700 newton meters. I don't know what that is in the other one. Uh, but either way, that's a lot. <laughs> 942 horsepower in a pickup truck like this. On tyres like that might be dangerous. I should probably put you on full-on race tyres. But there we go. It is ready. It is ready for a run. Little bit terrified of it, not gonna lie. So, we are back to fairly familiar territory. The <laughs> test track is going to hold host to possibly one of the maddest vehicles I have ever built on the game. I'm hoping it's going to be vaguely controllable, not expecting too much out of it, but there we go. Uh, we're going to oh, get back to a fixed camera angle. Whoa! <laughs> okay, you go full throttle. Funnily enough, it just wants to spin the rear wheels. It's not, it's not taken too long before we had a bit of an accident. Uh, there is going to have to be a lot of throttle control. Or, well, there, there are two options. You can either try and drive this car very carefully and spin, or drive the car very sideways and spin. It's, it's basically, it's going to spin. It should be good across the bumps at least, which is something we've not always seen from cars here. Christ. <laughs> like, this is an option, whether it's a good option or not. To be fair, I want to put this V8 into much smaller cars with probably less control. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether the, like, Ford Pinto-style car with supercharged V8 would be worse than this or not. Could go either way, to be fair. It's not... <laughs> it's not very controllable. It's barely, barely drivable. I, I, it would go quickly in a straight line after about a year's time where it might have finally got some traction. How fast can we go? I'm not even going to get it vaguely. There's not any sort of throttle telemetry, but uh, believe me when I say I am not even half throttle in this and struggling to, ugh, to get it to... I mean, it's a cool showpiece. I think that may be more what it's for. Oh, I'm pretty sure the standard engine is faster. I'm going to say... <laughs> uh, yeah, the standard engine was a better, a, be a better option than this. I've done goofed. <laughs> I cannot use any power in it at all. It just wibbles and wobbles and 
doesn't really do what you want, and then all of a sudden, lets go and crashes into a wall. There's <laughs> no grip. I, I didn't expect the off-road tyres to be amazing, but I had slightly hoped for a touch more grip around here than we are currently getting. It's 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 weird, but <laughs> it's not. It's an understeery mess, quickly followed by a very oversteery mess. You can't really slide it about very much because it's so twitchy and uncooperative that even well, well, as soon as you try, it's just going to spin. So you're left permanently fighting it. Oh, that's a tire bundle. Okay, it's terrible on the race circuit. The only good thing it can do really is well, this. It might there might be a, a chance for redemption. It's only a small chance, but there might be a chance for redemption if we actually go to an off-road area. Maybe the tyres mean it'll be useful there. Now, perhaps our mad contraption is going to be more at home here. Admittedly, it isn't all-wheel drive, but it should have the tyres capable of handling this sort of terrain. It should have the ground clearance to handle this sort of terrain. Perhaps we're going to go back for a... Uh, Third person camera angle through this. Uh, we couldn't. Um, might not have the right height to deal with that rock. It's not quite the jeeps, but it's. Oh, that's a bit too far back. Come on, come on, climb your way out of there. Yeah, it's despite being rear wheel drive, it's pretty solid at climb or at, at finding some traction. For actually, yes, yeah, not bad going considering that hill. We've had many a vehicle stumped trying to climb that hill just being unable to even find traction and this having no momentum was able to find the rear wheel drive traction required hey we've rolled it <laughs> it's closed enough uh, so important questions answered it will roll it has a silly it's a very very foul racy car it has a silly engine it will roll it's completely and utterly uncontrollable it's like a setup challenge car now we're just doing pirouettes on a rock I think that's stuck isn't it I don't think I can go anywhere with that. Uh, let's go quickly restart that session. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure we've really been that... I mean, I've been successful in terms of making a silly car. As I said, this is more of a showpiece rather than a usable vehicle. It's uncontrollable on the tarmac completely. And on the dirt, it's got the traction, but not the ride height. And being rear-wheel drive does hamper it a little bit. I don't actually know which way I want to go around here. Uh, I think I used to have a like a route around this bit. This is no better across these sort of rocks than some of the sports cars. I mean, I've taken a... I think I took a Shelby Daytona around here, possibly. <laughs> Certainly taken some crazy thing. I think a hot rod. Definitely took the hot rod around here at some point. Um... Uh, Engine swaps are a nice thing to have as an option, uh, however, sometimes they make your cars ten times worse. Or in this case, unusable. Yeah, we're wedged again, aren't we? God damn it. So, well, there we go. Engine swaps are a thing that have that have come to Car Mechanic Simulator. It'll be fun, it's a fun little thing for making, like this, you know, making slight alterations to a vehicle, uh, making slight changes, you know, yeah, you can put the Hemi V8 in this if you want, or go for the supercharger, and so on. Sadly, not quite as extreme in options, I can't make little hatchbacks into V8 monsters, which is, well, most of the entertainment value for me. Your car might also be undrivable unless you put it on race tyres. Uh, apparently, we can't get up the hill this time. All of that talk is now being wasted into into wheel spin there. A little, sadly, a little bit too simplistic on scope, but it's it was a free, it's a free update at the end of the day, and you can probably mess around and well, you can create mess around, create things like this. There'll be other uh, potentially interesting swaps that uh, you can add to the vehicles. Wish, wish we could do a little bit more with it. Maybe it's something we'll see in the future. Maybe some of the new DLC cars and whatnot that then they come out. I think Mercedes is on the way. Maybe we'll be able to do something with some of their engines, or maybe some engines are going there that are unusual. Uh, unfortunately, 
I'm not holding out a huge amount of hope. I think we're going to be stuck with V8 swapping for V8s. Maybe I6s swapping for other I6s, although, again, I didn't see any of those. Might be some I4 uh, swaps, but doesn't look like, from what I've seen, outside of potentially mod cars, we might see some clever stuff there. Uh, we're not necessarily going to see too much more. Uh, there we go. It's fun, and, fun, and, fun and enough reason to come back to Car Mechanics Simulator. If, like me, you haven't played it for a little while, uh, it's a fun enough reason to go and uh, check some things out and maybe maybe get back into the game, play around with some more vehicles. But uh, that is going to be it for this video and our mad supercharged truck. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, a uh, goodbye.